tell you along the way the powerful business lessons I learned that I then used again and again. And actually, I started my business, quite honestly, in my little mind, my warped way of looking at it, when I was a little kid at home because I was one of ten children. And for anybody in the room who might have a lot of kids in your family, you, when you're raised in a bunch of kids, it's really like a business world. It's like you have a town of your own and everybody performs a function. And you have a head of the household, which in my household was clearly my mother, not my dad. And, um, and I learned most of my most important lessons as a little kid from my mother and father that I took into the workplace and actually did a direct knockoff of what my mother did at home. I did in business, and it worked remarkably well. So let me bring you back for just a couple of minutes to our household where we grew up. We occupied the lower floor of a three-family house in a small town in New Jersey, and we definitely had the best floor because we had control of the side yard, even though the other tenants upstairs were entitled to it. They had to go by our doors to get to the side yard. And so we control that yard, and we had two bedrooms in our apartment. We had six girls in the girls' room that my mom called the girls' room, and four boys in the boys' room, and my mother and father produced all those kids from the living room couch. <laughs> How, I don't know. I never saw them sleep. They were up in the morning when we got up. They were up when we went to bed, but obviously they were doing something in the, in the nighttime. <laughs> my parents were devout Catholics, and they practiced the rhythm method. You probably don't even know what that is anymore. <laughs> something the Pope dreamt up. That never worked. But within my family, it is exactly a year and a half between each child, like almost to the moment. So I honestly, when I got older and thought about it, I thought, maybe mom and dad weren't so sexy. Maybe they only did it ten times, right? <laughs> but my mother, as I mentioned a moment ago, was the power in my household, not to take away from my father, but she ruled the household much like um, somebody would rule an army camp. It was extremely strict in our house, and my mother's key to keeping order, which she certainly did, was her tremendous ability to organize. And anyone who's ever worked in business for more than a day, if you have to hire another person, organization becomes more and more important as you build your team. So my mother drilled organization into us as children because of her example. So to give you an idea of little systems that worked for her, we had in our kitchen uh, the sock drawers, they're really bread drawers. And so all the boys' socks were in the top drawer and the girls' socks were in the bottom drawer. The boys were all navy blue, all one size, and the girls were all white, all one size. And so picture getting 10 kids out to school in the morning. All you have to do is reach in the right drawer, although my brother T never reached in the right drawer and we should have known then that, that T was different than the other boys in the family. <laughs> but. We would just reach into the drawer and grab any two socks. They didn't have to be mated. And I don't think we were, we were probably maybe in seventh or eighth grade before I know for myself, I realized not every kid at school has that bump on the back of their ankle because we always were in the large sock. We just had to grow into it. But that was an efficient system that my mother incorporated. And then we all had to wear white bucks. You don't know what those are? They're like preludes to sneakers, white leather shoes to the Catholic school we went to. And my mother had a great system for that. She would line up the shoes on the radiator right before you exited the door. So once your socks were in, you just grabbed your shoe, which was in size order, slipped into them, went out the door. But the night before, what she would do is take a large paintbrush, like as though she was painting, even though it was a white shoe polish, and she'd flip the shoes on each side and just paint up and down. And I think one of the happiest days of my mother's life was when she realized that she painted the silver radiator white that she wouldn't have to clean up the drips. It was like, oh, listen to this. So she did everything in that household with enormous efficiency. And so when myself and my nine brothers and sisters went out to work, it is amazing that we all wound up with very disorganized spouses. <laughs> but we all have very neat households, despite everything. The other trait my mother had, which for me was the most powerful trait and lesson in life, was she was a phenomenal inspiration. She was a motivator. And so as she brought each child home from the hospital, she would announce the day she brought that kid into the living room what their gift was. So for my brother Eddie, she would say, Eddie is a born leader. And was he a born leader? 
who knows? But he, is he a born leader in what he does for his town, his family, his occupation? Everything about Eddie is a natural leader. But what was interesting is Eddie, now I realize as a parent myself, that he was hyperactive. He was uncontrollable. But every time he was out of line, my mother would shout down from the landing, Eddie, straighten up. Every boy is watching you. You're a born leader. Set the example. And he'd straighten up and be proud. And so she used this gift of mentioning what people did well or labeling her children in a positive way to control her clan. For my brother T, who always liked to wear the white socks, she announced the day he was home from the hospital, your brother T is going to be a magnificent dancer. He grew up to be a ballet dancer. Now, was he going to do it anyway? Who the hell knows? But it worked for him, and he became a ballet dancer. With myself, she constantly said, Barbara, you have a wonderful imagination, a wonderful imagination. Do I believe I do? I really think I have a great imagination, but doesn't everybody? But on a rainy day, she'd tell me to take six or seven kids in the basement and put on a Broadway show, and I'd occupy them for hours with shows. If it was a sunny day, she'd tell me to go out in the backyard and set up a rock store. What the hell's a rock store? But she'd say, oh, you'll figure it out. You have a wonderful imagination. We'd be selling rocks for hours back there, all right? So the beauty to what my mother did is she chose as a parent who barely had the time to do the eight loads of wash and the ironing, whatever they had, the meals on the table, she chose an, both an efficient system and a positive system where she underlined the positive in each child and slammed it home day in and day out and day in and day out. And we all fell for it. We all believe that's who we were. And so she really, in a powerful, motivational way, molded the kids that came out of that household. Does that make sense to you? I'll move on to my dad, my mother's 11th child. My dad was, for us, our single best playmate. He always, his entire life, worked two jobs. He'd work during the day as a printing press salesman, and then at night he'd wash, what are the brown trucks? The uh, UPS, I always forget to, what that company's called. He'd wash UPS trucks at, in the evening, and then he'd come home and go right back out to his job a few hours later. So he was such a hardworking man feeding all those kids. But what my father did on weekends is he didn't work, and it was my mother's edict that he play with his kids. And so whatever we did on weekends, my dad was the biggest playmate we had. His idea of fun was a little warped. And so on a snowy day, he would put 10 kids on a wooden ladder, pull us all the way up the backside yard, which was a slight hill. He'd give it a shove, jump on the last rung, and we'd go flying over the retaining wall into oncoming traffic. You think that's funny? It is funny if you're a kid, but if you were my mother screaming and stomping down the front steps to stop all the fun, of course you'd appreciate her sense that that wasn't so smart. I remember one day we used to go every Sunday up to a, like a local lake, and one Sunday in the middle of July the skies opened up and hailstorms like golf balls came pelleting down like instantly, like within a minute the sky... Well, every parent was screaming and grabbing their kids and running to the parking lot for shelter, and my mother was pulling us out of the water screaming while my father was screaming, get under the water and stay dry, right? So it's like, yeah, that sounds like more fun, you know? Did it make for difficult times in the marriage? Constantly, because their philosophy of children or raising kids was so different. But did it give us a large menu of what to pick from as kids, you betcha it did. The other great thing my father taught us, even though it was a negative in our household, that I now realize was such a positive, is my father was a walking, talking example of insubordination. He would regularly come home to the kitchen table at 6 o'clock when we all ate, and he would say, guess what, kids? And the entire crew would scream, you got fired again? He was regularly fired as a printing press salesman because he always told the boss's son where to shove it and he'd tell us the details of how it happened and he was our hero. The idea that our father told the big guy where to go and the way he did it and how he stomped out, it was like watching John Wayne at our own kitchen table. Of course, my mother in her Sears dress, her house dress, had those blotches all up her neck, ro like moving up by the second. Thing. How the hell am I going to feed these kids till he gets another job? And thank God he must have interviewed well because my father would never be out of work for more than two to three weeks before he'd land his next job. 
keep that job for three or four months, get fired from that, go on to the next job. There must be 70 million printing presses in the New York area. That's all I can figure out. But you know, when each of the children left the household, every kid went into business for themselves, like you are. Every kid had learned the lesson that they didn't want to work for the next guy. Everybody there thought the idea that you'd go in and report to a horrible boss, because my father's, all his bosses were terrible. They couldn't fathom doing that. And so after our you know, catch and catch Ken type jobs we all had through high school and if, if we went to college and later on, it was always with the idea that we'd all be in business for ourselves. And out of my 10 siblings, everybody's in business for themselves. And I think if my father had been happy and successful as an employee, I just don't think that would have wound up that way, right?